Hi YouTube. The subject of weak hadith and the false claims of hadiths being irrelevant or being inadmissible, in effect being false because they are supposedly weak, comes up constantly. You'll find this in the comment sections on YouTube and Facebook, and I felt it's worth my while to do a quick primer on this and show you all the primary evidence that shows that these Muslims are simply either mistaken or lying. And you can use this information to refute them, quote this at them. I will provide links to all of the necessary works, and you can download them and use them in your own polemics. What we're looking at right now is the Fat al-Bari, which is the commentary on Sahih Bukhari, which is the most highly regarded collection of hadith in the Islamic world. As you see, it says here, the finest commentary to the greatest book of hadith now in English. Fat al-Bari, or the victory of the creator, commentary on Bukhari, by Sheikh al-Islam ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. Now, Sheikh al-Islam is a highly regarded Islamic scholar. There are roughly two dozen of them, and these are the most highly revered scholars in Islam. So Sheikh al-Islam is an honorific given to a major scholar of Islam who was highly influential. These people's writings became orthodoxy and became part of the Islamic Sharia. This is widely considered to be the finest commentary on the greatest book of Hadith. The initiation of its English translation is a seminal moment and this is a major contribution to a new wave of Islamic classics in English to the needs of Muslim communities in the English-speaking world and also the growing interest on the part of non-Muslims. This website is Kitabun, a very well-known Islamic book sales website. Let's look at what else they have to say about this book. Hadiths, the recorded words, actions, approvals and disapprovals of the Prophet Muhammad are the main sources of Islamic law and doctrine. Hadiths were evaluated through a rigorous selection process and were compiled in collections in book form of which Imam al-Bukhari's al-Jimi al-Sahi is considered the greatest. Over the centuries, hundreds of commentaries have been written on the Sahi of Bukhari. None have received the same degree of claim and critical approval as the Fat al-Bari of Asqalani. This critically important work has retained its immense status and popularity over six centuries since it was completed as is evident from the many editions available in Arabic today. The main reason for which is the tremendous breadth and depth of the author's erudition and the acuteness of his insights and judgment, as are evident on every page, can be said to have set a new standard in Hadith scholarship. This is a link to the book on the web. So now let's discuss weak Hadith. Weak Hadith are considered true. They are not considered false. It says here on page 12, and I will have a link available, you can download this for yourself. Removing weak hadith from works was not the example of the scholars, otherwise Imam Ibn Hajar would not have included them himself in Fat al-Bari as sources to take knowledge from. Weak hadith are used to support opinions because a weak hadith containing the words of the Prophet is preferred over pure opinion and personal reasoning. And this is the example set by all the scholars including Imam Bukhari himself, who used them deliberately in his work Al-Adab al-Mufrad. The Sahih of Imam Bukhari is a collection of the Sahih, which is the most authoritative hadith, specifically. It is not a collection of the only hadith that scholars should use. The scholars themselves state a Sahih hadith has about a 99 to 100% chance of being entirely accurate. A Hassan hadith has about 85 to 99% chance of being entirely accurate. A Da'if hadith has about a 45-85% to 85 chance of being entirely accurate. Even a fabricated hadith has a 0-45% to 45 chance of being accurate. They go on to say, The grading it was given may have been wrong, or the fabricator may have spoken the truth in this instance. So weak hadith should not be treated like fabricated hadith, because an 85% chance of being entirely accurate is a very high chance. If a person received 85% on his test scores, would he throw that out saying that isn't worth anything? Each hadith is treated individually. There is no such thing in Islam as banning an entire grade of hadiths from being used. Even fabricated hadith are still studied because one scholar may grade it fabricated while another may grade it sahih. And there are many famous examples among the scholars of this occurring. This makes things very, very clear. When you're told that's weak, it is invalid, that statement in itself is invalid. Provide this evidence back to them and ask them why their scholars say differently. 
let's go to the Sharia. I will use the Umdat al-Salik, the world's most famous and most popular Sharia manual. We will see examples of weak hadith being utilized to prove points. This is section A4.0 and it is called personally obligatory knowledge. So this is knowledge that every Muslim must have. And they speak of three categories of sacred knowledge. The first is personally obligatory knowledge. And it says, it's obligatory characters how groups of scholars have interpreted the hadith in the Musnad of Masuli from Anas, who relates that the Prophet said, seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim. What is important is that it goes on to say, the meaning of this hadith, though the hadith itself is not well authenticated, being weak is true. The meaning here should be very clear to all of us. The Sharia is relying on a weak hadith and it is affirming it as completely true. In fact, true enough to A, be included in the Sharia and B, to uphold a ruling on what they consider obligatory knowledge, things that every Muslim must know. And this is using a weak hadith. Let us now look at that reference P9.5 within the Umdat al-Salik. Having discussed lies and forgeries, we must strictly distinguish them from the hadith category called not well authenticated. So in Islam, within the scholarly works, we see that they don't call them weak, they call them not well authenticated. And it says here, da'if, literally meaning weak so termed because of such factors as having a channel of transmission containing a narrator whose memory was poor, one who was unreliable, unidentified by name, or for other reasons. Such hadiths legally differ from forgeries in the permissibility of ascribing them to the Prophet and in other ways. So a weak hadith may be ascribed to Muhammad. There is no higher authority than the Sharia. This tells us that these hadith are authentic they are considered sufficient to carry the words of the Prophet Muhammad. This should put paid to the lies you're being told and the misinformation provided by Islamic apologists who claim that weak hadith are unreliable or false. This is absolutely not so. So why does the Sharia quote weak hadith as factual evidence? Because weak hadith are considered reliable by the Islamic scholars. This is the download link on archive.org. Look for the Fat al-Bari of Bukhari. That's the link. I'll provide those below. Thank you. I hope this was helpful. Please do support the channel. Uh, share, subscribe, use this information. And if you need any information, please contact me. And hopefully I'll see you in the comments below. Cheers.